are all beauties. Hey guys, we're up here at the Fisherman's View Sandwich Boat Basin at the mouth of the east end of the canal. Over our shoulders, sitting up here at Cape Cod Bay with Captain Tyler McAllister on board the Cynthia C Squared. Hang with us, this is gonna be an excellent shoot, guys. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be uh, something that we have not done before and something that's extremely unique. So uh, I think it's gonna be a really cool shoot. In today's show, we're going behind the scenes of a commercial fishery, one that selectively harvests tuna with a traditional method of fishing that requires both precision and patience. Today, our crew is aboard a stick boat with Captain Tyler McAllister setting out in search of giant western Atlantic bluefin. My name is Tyler McAllister. I'm fishing on the Cynthia C Square to 38 Holland and equipped with power and pulpit, which were built by All Cape Welding down in Hannes. They did an unbelievable job. We're headed up north on a stell wagon looking for giant tuna. I think a combination of the weather and the tides have made the fish very difficult to catch. Today's a perfect day, light west wind, supposed to come around light like southeast in the afternoon. Last time we were out, we did find a good number of fish up feeding in the mackerel, the herring, and the sand eels, making it rather difficult to catch with a harpoon. But hopefully today, they'll square up and run. Tyler's spotter plane soars over Provincetown in order to catch up with the Cynthia C Square. I just turned to the east. Once he does, they waste no time in getting to work. Okay, Chloe, 11 o'clock. Turn that tide rip. At about two and a half boats. 11.30. Two boats. I think they just turned to the east. I'm not sure. I'm in the clear. Yeah, I don't know what was up with that fish. The number of fish that I was seeing back in like 2008, 2009 was, was unbelievable. And you have another massive year class yeah, of young bluefin coming into the population, which is very encouraging. Really which means, you know, we, we worked hard. There was a lot of work and effort to re recover the bluefin. Uh, a lot of fishermen, you know, had to stop fishing, or we had you know very tight quotas, and um, so now we're starting to, to benefit Enjoy from that effort. That. Yeah. yeah. Like, how are your regulations different from those of a recreational angler? Well, the biggest one is size class. Yeah. We can't keep a, retain a fish under 73 inches. Yeah. How many can you hang? How many fish can you? Can uh, you last year was five a day. Yeah, okay. And the year before that, it was four. What's you the know, average though? You go out there. If I would you say get two. two. Fish, it's two. You get two yeah, fish. You're two doing fish, Two fish a trip this this year. Uh, I'm just kind of turning a little more north and east at this point, but they definitely were two in a fish, and there's definitely two bunches. So that's what I got right here. The last couple of years, there's been a lot more herring around too, which is a very good indicator that you know the the herring is recovering. There was a big question as to what happened to the herring. What's that? Spraying white or? A little bit. Swimming white. 230. I thought I saw a whale floating around over in there, too. Yeah, my bad. Come on. Yeah. 7'10", 153, a couple of bunches of quite good-sized jumpers here. Um, encouraging. Right over to 1 o'clock now. 
Despite the basking shark's intimidating appearance, they are actually filter feeders that feed on zooplankton and other tiny prey. A pot of tuna is falling closely behind the basking shark, likely to feed on the sea herring that are also feeding on the plankton. Got color on the fish! Right, right, right! Captain McAllister's home port of Mattapoisett is more than just a harbor in Buzzards Bay. Its yesteryear charm contains remnants of the town's past, including its deep roots in the fishing industry. Inside Mattapoisett's oldest church, the historical museum preserves relics of the town's past and offers visitors a glimpse of the town's ties to the sea. Buzzards Bay and Cape Cod are widely considered the harpooning capital of the Western Atlantic. And the museum's collection includes F. Gilbert Hinsdale's original patent for the oscillating spear tip. Although the harpoon as a fishing method has prehistoric origins, it has evolved as a modern fishing method that still exists today. Let you know. What are you gonna do now, Jeff? What are you Forward gonna do? Forward left. That's right. Put him off my starboard side, buddy. Nice fish. Real nice fish. He's not gonna have a mark on him either. Harpooning is highly selective as it allows the fishermen to choose which particular fish they harvest. And tuna harvested by a harpoon is coveted by seafood buyers, as the electrically charged harpoon renders a giant bluefin lifeless on impact, minimizing resistance and preserving the quality of the tuna meat. Nice head shot. Worked out good. Reset my zapper too when you're just off it, okay? Yep. <laughs> you like when that fish zap? All right, how long, 81? 81 and a half. The crew wastes no time in getting back to work as every hour of sunlight out here has the potential of being productive. 